everyone, and welcome to the holiday edition of Lord Nelson's blog. Today, we'll be demonstrating how to make your very own horse head holiday wreath. My name is Ellen Rankins, and I'm a graduate student in the Endocrinology and Animal Biosciences program here at Rutgers University. And with me, I have Francesca. Hi, everyone. I'm Francesca Bukowski, and I'm an undergraduate student studying animal science here at Rutgers. Thank you, Francesca. So to begin with, you're going to need to lay out some supplies in order to make your wreath. The first thing that you'll need is some sort of wire. So I've chosen to use a coat hanger today, so I've simply unraveled a wire coat hanger. If you don't want to use a coat hanger for your wreath, Another great option is craft or floral wire. In addition to your wire, you need some sort of garland. So here today with me, I have this lovely um, piece of garland. You see, I've chosen a nice traditional green garland. So today I am also using green garland, but a little later you will see Ellen and I using some other colors and some fun sparkly garland as well. So in addition to your wire and your garland, you're going to need some sort of cord to make an inner framework for your wreath. So I've chosen a, just a heavy duty twine to use today. Some other options for this inner framework include more of your wire. You could also use things like fishing line or even thread. So to attach my garland to my wire frame today, my garland is a wire-based garland. Um, so I'm going to wrap the garland directly to the wire frame and use it to attach itself to the wire frame. The garland that I'm using today is a bit more flexible than Ellen's and does not have a sturdy inner wire. So I will be using hot glue to attach my garland to my wire wreath frame. If you don't want to use hot glue, you have the option to use, again, some cord, some of your thin wire or fishing line. The last items you'll need are some fun decorations for your wreath. I've chosen a nice black and red ribbon here because I'm going for a Rutgers theme with my ESC hat. My wreath will also be showing a nice Rutgers theme and I have some nice bright Rutgers red ribbon as well as a little Rutgers R that I printed out. Some additional items that will be helpful in your wreath making activities include a pair of scissors, like the pair I have here, and also a pair of wire cutters. So I have a pair of pliers that have wire cutters in the pliers. And if you'll be planning on using the hot glue gun, it is a good idea to lay down some type of splash mat or a protective covering over whatever surface you are going to be working on. Here to join in the fun festivities with us today, we have some members of the Equine Science Center staff and student staff. Kyle Hartman, Dr. Karen Malinowski, Dr. Carrie Williams, and Jennifer Weinert. So to get started on our festive holiday wreath, we are going to start off by making a wire frame. Now, if you're using floral wire like I am, you'll probably have to attach some of your pieces together so that your frame is long enough. And to do this, you're going to take your two strands, cross the ends, and twist them over each other, like so. The pieces that I'm using are about a foot and a half in length a piece. And I wound up using about five of them for a medium to large sized frame. Once you've strung your wire pieces together, or if you're using hangers like I am, you're going to have to attach your pieces. So I've chosen to use two hangers here. And so I'm just gonna take the ends of these two hangers and I'm going to twist them together, just like you were doing for your smaller pieces of wire, if that's what you were using. So I'm attaching one end here. I'm going to grab the other ends of my finger and twist them together. 
So at some point, you should end up with a nice loop of wire. And at this point, you're ready to put your creative powers to work. So you're going to begin shaping this into something that approximates a horse head. So I have found that it's easiest to begin with an ear. So I'm going to bend this section up here to get a nice point to begin my ear. And then I'm going to start working down the front of my horse's face over here. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. You're going for an approximation here because as you attach your garland, you can kind of smooth out any imperfections in your horse's head. Eventually, you're going to end up with something that looks roughly like a horse's head. So you can see here, I have my horse's ears, comes down to his nose, and then I've got his neck extended off in this direction. So once you have your wire in the rough shape of a horse head, depending on how sturdy your wire is, you may want to attach some braces in the frame of wire you have so that when you start hanging the heavier garland on it, it maintains its shape. So you can see the silver wire I have used for my frame. I have attached bracers in darker brown wire going from the neck to just in front of the ear and another from the neck out to where the horse's mane would be. And this makes it so that my frame is nice and sturdy and won't distort once I start putting the garland on it. If you're using thicker wire or potentially thicker coat hangers, you may not need to do this step. <laughs> mine's, uh, mine's looking a little bit like a Doberman. Yeah, if I go with dog, I'll just give it to my dog friend. <laughs> German Shepherdish. <laughs> oh, very nice, Ellen. Yeah, oh, Ellen, that is nice. Sure, we're going to go with it. At this point, you're ready to begin attaching your inner framework. So I have my twine out now, and I've plugged in my hot glue gun here, so it's warming up. So I'm going to begin down here at my horse's muzzle. You could begin kind of wherever you want it to, though. So I'm just going to begin by knotting my twine around the wire frame here, um, so kind of securing it in place to begin with. And then I'm going to take my twine and I'm going to start by weaving back and forth. So I'm going to end up with kind of these triangular shapes as my twine um, weaves back and forth across this wire frame. And this is a point as I go along and my hot glue gun warms up, I can kind of tack these crossings in place so that my twine doesn't slide up and down the frame. So here at this first crossing, I would take my hot glue gun and secure this in place. Just make sure as always that you're being safe as you're using your hot glue gun and that you don't burn your fingers on the glue or the hot glue gun itself. I've secured that first one in place. I'm going to come down here to my next one and also secure this in place. You can also use some more of your craft or floral wire to make this inner framework pattern. And the wire will give your wreath a little bit more sturdiness than using the cord. So it's probably a good option if you're worried your wreath might get knocked over or it's hanging in a very windy area. So at this point, I have my framework all filled in, all down through my wire outline. And at this point, I'm ready to begin attaching my garland. So I've brought my garland up here and you can just choose somewhere on uh, which to start. Um, I found that it's easiest if you kind of start maybe at the base of the neck and then work your way up. But again, you can choose what um, works for you. So I'm going to start by attaching to the outer framework. And again, because I have this wire garland, I'm just simply taking the wire pieces and wrapping that around that outer wire framework in order to attach the garland to the outline. And so I'm just going to continue working my way up the wire framework and attaching the garland as I go. 
and I'm fluffing out as I go. So you're going to continue working your way around your entire frame outline, um, getting that horse's outline set in, and then you're going to come back and fill in. So you'll kind of spiral your way into your wreath once you're back to where you started from. So now that my wire frame and inner framework is also done, I'm going to begin attaching the garland as Ellen has begun doing. So as she explained, it is often easier to start in the bottom corner. And since I'm using a more flexible garland that does not have inner wire, I will be attaching it to the framework with hot glue. I find that this is easiest if you put a little dollop of hot glue on the wire itself and then press the garland to that spot on the frame. You could also work by putting the hot glue on the garland and pressing that to your wire. However, you may wind up hot gluing your table instead of your frame. Dr. Williams, is yours all going to be white? I'm gonna have a gray mare, yep. That's cool. Ooh. I like it. <laughs> that looks fantastic. Yeah, it does. It actually shapes out better with when you're all said and done. You can you can hide a lot with the garland. So as you can see, I have completed attaching my garland to the outline of my wreath. And you can see here that all of the wire is on the same side of the wreath attached with hot glue. And now we are going to begin filling in the center of the wreath by spiraling in from the outside and continuing to attach the garland with hot glue to the wire making up the inner framework of the wreath. So now that I've gotten the entire silhouette done, I'm just spiraling in. So I'm kind of just making my way in and I'm attaching my garland to that framework that we made just a moment ago as I go along and do this. So you'll just see that I'm spiraling inward and working on filling in those gaps. And I'll continue this inward spiral until there are no more gaps left in my horse head. Oh, you're getting oh, there. Nice. Yeah, excellent. So you'll notice here that I've got all of my horse head filled in. You don't see any major gaps. And so I still have a little bit of garland remaining here at the end and I don't need all of this extra. So I'm gonna take these wire cutters um, because I'm working with this garland that has that thick wire in the middle. So I'm just gonna take those wire cutters and um, snip the end of my garland off. And so now I'm just left with the piece that I need and I'll finish attaching that in my horse head here. So now that my wreath has been filled all the way in, since my garland doesn't have a thick inner wire, I can go ahead and cut off any excess with plain old scissors. And then again, since the garland doesn't have a thick inner wire, it's a little bit more difficult if you need to shape your overall outline when you're done. What you can do instead is take your scissors and shear any unruly parts of the edges of your wreath in order to reestablish your nice horse head shape. So you'll notice here on my wreath that I filled everything in, but I've lost a little bit of my outline. So up here at the top, my horse seems to have lost his ears. So since I'm working with this wire wreath, I can kind of bend some of this around and play with it. So I can bring my horse's ear back in up there. I can kind of flatten down some of these curves. If I feel like maybe down here, his muzzle got out of hand, I'm gonna fold those in, bring those back in. So just kind of a final shaping. And so again, this is where your original framework doesn't have to be exactly perfect. You've got a little bit of flexibility at the end where you can play around with this and kind of get the final shape that you want from your wreath. Now that 
I'm done with the shaping process, this is what my wreath looks like. And here is how mine turned out. Ooh. Oh, Kyle, that looks great! Oh! Yeah! Kyle, oh, keep yes, it up, I can't see it. Kyle, Kyle, that, that's a very long nose. It almost looks like yeah. the mo a moose. Yeah. Oh, oh Doctor, Carrie, that, that looks that great. Kind of Carrie, that looks great. Kind of a horse? It looks great. <laughs> that looks so nice. It does. Oh, you know. <laughs> Back out. I think we kind of lost his ear somewhere in there. Yeah, the ears just kind of disappear. Yeah. All right, here's what I got so far. Oh, cool. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Francesca, that was beautiful. Thank you. And Jennifer has got a red one coming. Wow. Nice, Jen. It's close. Yeah. You just got a, it's got okay. a missing spot. Great. So for my festive trimming, I've got some nice red and black ribbon here. So I'm going to be using that to put a halter on my horse's head here and possibly a bow if I'm feeling very festive. And then I also have this nice ESC Wreckers cap that I'm going to see if I can fit onto my horse. So it seems like Ellen and I were on the same festive holiday page. I also found a nice red and black bow and attached a nice little Rutgers Scarlet Knight pin to it, which will be going onto my wreath, as well as a nice bright red Rutgers ribbon and Rutgers R to be used to make the horse's halter. I have my ribbon and my pair of scissors here. So I'm going to cut the pieces I'm going to need for my horse's halter. So I'm first going to measure off the piece I'm going to need for his nose band. So I need enough to kind of go around his muzzle here. And I'm just gonna cut through my ribbon, maybe, for that nose band piece. So I have that piece. And then I know where my nose band was. So I'm gonna measure up from that nose band placement up behind his ears, kind of where his pole would be. And I'm going to cut this piece for his cheek piece of the halter. And then finally, I'm going to have a piece for his throat latch. So again, I kind of know where this cheek piece is running. So I'm gonna measure down from that and underneath his throat latch. And I'm cutting these just a little bit on the long side um, because I can always wrap the excess behind the back of my wreath. So I will be putting a nice bright red bridle onto my horse head wreath. And to do this, I will be using almost the same pattern that Ellen had described, except there will be two extra pieces of ribbon. One going in front of the horse's ear to the cheek piece, and the other being the rein going from the nose band down to the neck. I started out with a very thick ribbon, as you can see here, and I decided it was a little bit bulky for my horse's head, and I wanted to go down to a thinner size. So in order to do that, I've already done this on two of my pieces, and I'm going to demonstrate on my third piece here. I'm just folding this ribbon in half, and then I'm just laying down a line of hot glue along the edge of the ribbon so that I can glue these two edges together and end up with a ribbon that's half the width of my original ribbon and that looks a little bit more suited to the size of my horse's head. So I now have all three of my pieces for the halter laid out here. And in order to glue them on, I'm actually going to glue them to the back side. I'm not going to be attaching them to the front side. So I'm going to flip my wreath over. So you can see here kind of my um, inner framework on the back side here. And I'm gonna start with that nose piece. So I'm gonna wrap that around um, where I want it to sit on his face here, on his muzzle. And then I'm just gonna attach a spot of glue to the um, back of that ribbon and then press it down onto the back side of my wreath. Again, I'm just securing the ends in place here. So I'm gonna do that on both sides of the ribbon so that it wraps around his nose. 
So now that I've got that nose piece secured, I'm gonna flip back to the front side of my wreath. Again, we're looking at the front of this horse and I'm going to be attaching this cheek piece next. So I need the cheek piece to begin um, under his nose band down here. And so I'm actually just going to secure this cheek piece to the nose band itself. So again, I'm placing a spot of glue on the end of my ribbon and then I'm attaching that to the underside of that nose band piece. I'll hold those in place for just a second, make sure it's secured. And then I'm gonna run up. And at this point, I need to flip my wreath back over to the back side. And I'm gonna, again, just fold the end of that cheek piece over. So again, we're working right here at the base of my horse's ear. I'm going to apply a spot of hot glue to the back side of that ribbon and press it down. So it's secured on the back side. Now that I've attached the cheek piece, I'm gonna flip back over so that I can begin attaching my throat latch piece. So again, I need that throat latch to begin under the edge of my horse's cheek piece. So I'm gonna run it right through here. And so again, I'm going to attach a spot of glue to the front side of the ribbon for that cheek piece. And then I'm going to attach it to the back side of my horse's cheek piece here. Again, hold that for just a second so that it attaches firmly. And I'm going to wrap this under and where I want it to be. So it's gonna look something like that. And again, I'm gonna flip my wreath over so that I'm attaching it to the back side. And you'll notice I ended up with this ribbon a little bit on the long side and that's fine. So I'm just gonna attach kind of a strip of glue on this ribbon so I can pin down that whole excess piece to the back side here. And again, since nobody's gonna see the back side of my wreath, it's okay if I have a little bit extra floating around back here, as long as the front side looks okay. So then when we flip back to the front, this is what it looks like at this point with the halter attached. So this is what our horse head looks like with the bridle just about finished. I wound up with a little excess piece of ribbon, which I am going to trim off. And our bridle is now complete. So in order to attach my ESC hat to my wreath, I've taken the, a strand of this thin wire and I'm going to run it through the vents in the top of the hat here right because it makes a handy dandy little attachment site and then I'm just going to wrap that um, strand of wire around the base of my horse's ear here and kind of twist it together so that it will stay on my horse. And I've also then if you look at the back side of my horse here. Take in a strand of the garland from the back side here and I'm going to wrap it around um, the back of the hat through the little adjuster so that again that back side stays put and doesn't flop around hopefully. Next I am going to go ahead and add my festive bow to my wreath. Like a lot of holiday decorations, the bow has some wires that I can use to attach it to the wreath. So what you will do is essentially stick the wires through the garland on the wreath and twist them around to anchor it. And here we have our finished wreath. Now that you've seen our finished products, take a look at what everybody else came up with. Beautiful. Add some that snowflakes. Uh-huh. Oh, that looks lovely. Oh, green, I love it. Green eyes and a nostril. <laughs> love it. That looks so sharp. Nice, Ellen. I think oh, I'm done. done. You're done. Yeah. All right. Very nice. bright. Here's what I got so far. Oh, nice. nice. 
And now a message from our Equine Science Center director. Hello, everyone, greetings, happy holidays from the Rutgers Equine Science Center. Um, we just love all the support that you folks give us every single year. We wish you and your families well this holiday season during this very hectic times. Please stay healthy, stay safe, stay well. Um, enjoy your wonderful four-legged friends during these times. Um, give them an extra treat on this holiday time. And please think of the Equine Science Center at your year-end uh, thoughts about giving. Um, we want to continue our mission of better horse care through research and education to ensure the well-being of equine athletes as well as the New Jersey horse industry. And we can't do it without folks like you. So again, from all of us here, happy holidays, be safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you all very soon in 2021. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. From, from, from the, the Equine Science, Science Center. Center. For a complete list of supplies and instructions for making your holiday horse head wreath, please see the link below that will take you to the full blog post. Thank you.